Tonight on Life on the Rock, we've got motivational speaker Damon West. We'll watch a segment from his coffee bean talk. We'll join Father Joseph in the garden and much more. Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight we have Damon West. He's a motivational speaker. He has a great story of recovery from addiction, a journey that began while serving a 65-year prison sentence. He found Christ in this incredible way, and now he's out evangelizing and serving others. Mm -hmm. This is a show you definitely do not want to miss. It's going to be explosive because here's a man who goes from incarceration to giving people motivation, from prison to evangelization. So stay tuned for an exciting and powerful show. And we also have a Fruit of the Earth segment with Father Joseph. And now we want to show you an excerpt from one of Damon West's talks called Coffee Bean. This analogy is something I took with me and carried with me through prison. And I want you all to carry this analogy with you through the rest of your lives because I wish I'd have had this analogy when I was your age. He said, take this pot of boiling water. So we've got a pot of boiling water right here. He said, this boiling water represents the atmosphere that prison is, all right? The boiling water will change whatever element you put into it. He said, so I've got a carrot, an egg, and a coffee bean, West. He said, if I throw this carrot into that pot of boiling water, what's that boiling water gonna do to that carrot? Make it soft. That's right. He said, you do not want to be the carrot. The carrot does not fare well in prison at all. The carrot, first she's going to get hurt. Then they're going to steal everything from the carrot. And the carrot's probably going to get raped and maybe killed. You don't want to be the carrot. Worst one of them all. He said, so take this egg. I throw that egg in that pot of boiling water. What's that boiling water going to do to that egg? Make it hard. Exactly. He said, that egg will survive prison physically, but mentally and emotionally, that egg won't survive at all. If you become that egg, you're coming back out of prison with swastikas all over you, and you'll be someone your parents don't recognize. It's not even worth you coming out. And you'll probably be in the revolving door like the rest of us and keep going back in. Jackson had been to prison four or five times. He's an old man, too. He said, but if I take this little coffee bean, the smallest of all three of these things, and I throw this coffee bean in that pot of warm water, what happens? Changes the water, exactly. It changes the water. You go from having boiling water to coffee. He said, so that little coffee bean had the power to change the atmosphere in that water. He said, when you go to prison, you are going to have to be like that coffee bean. You're going to have to change the atmosphere around you because you're going to put out a certain vibe. You're going to put out a certain energy that other people are going to attract to that have that same kind of energy. So if you're positive, that little energy around you, that little bubble around you is going to attract other people that are positive. You have to go in there and find other little coffee beans because they're in there. you got to find those coffee beans, Wes. That's the only way you're going to survive and stay close to God. Damon West, it's good to have you here with us. Father Leonard, great yeah, to be here. It's such a pleasure, that, uh, your presence here. You know, you're a man who has such a powerful and inspirational story. There you are, you know, in your college years, having everything a young man would want, graduating, being successful, and then losing it all and ending up in prison. And then now you're out speaking, sharing God's love to people in prison and to college students and college athletes. Tell us about your story, about your journey, how God takes you from one place to another. It's been a remarkable journey. Uh, you know, it goes back, I'm a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm. I was born into a wonderful, loving Catholic home. Yeah. I got an older brother named Brandon, younger brother named Grayson. My mm -hmm. father is named Bob. My mother is named Jeannie. My mm -hmm. mother had this strong devotion to the Blessed Mother growing up. I mean, we would, I remember whenever uh, we would be stuck at a rain out at a baseball game or something like mm -hmm. that, and it would be in her car, and she had one of these little finger rosaries. You remember finger rosaries? Mm -hmm. She had one on the little yeah. gear, sh on the little turn signal thing when they were real small. Right. She'd pull it off, and we'd say the rosary. So mm -hmm. she's always been into that. And she had these little prayer plaques and, and crucifixes mm -hmm. all over the house. She couldn't escape God in this woman's home, right? right. So, but 
you know, not every family's perfect, and no, nobody's family's perfect. And, and we had our own problems. In, in 85, I was nine years old, and I came out and told my parents my mm. babysitter had been molesting me. And oh, childhood sexual abuse in the 80s. They didn't know as mm. much about it back then as they know now. But my mm. parents loved me. They sent me to counseling, went and talked to the family priest. We prayed mm -hmm. about it. We prayed a lot. But something inside that little nine-year-old boy went to a really dark place. And by the, time, by the time I was 10, I started getting to my dad's beer in the fridge. I started mm -hmm. sneaking drinks at my friend's houses mm -hmm. whose, whose parents had liquor cabinets. I started smoking cigarettes. By the time I'm 12, I'm smoking pot. So mm -hmm. I'm putting chemicals into my body to change the way I feel. I'm in recovery today. So I know that being in recovery, I look back on this. These, this is what's called an activating event in, mm -hmm. in life because right. I have the disease of addiction, mm -hmm. but this activated it. So I'm an addict in my early stages of my disease, but mm -hmm. I don't know that yet. Man, mm -hmm. I'm so, so far away from even having a realization of that kind of thing. But I'm a really good athlete, Father, and so mm -hmm. I get a lot of breaks cut to me in life. This is Texas, too, man. Texas yeah. high school football is big. You've, oh, see, yes. oh, you've yeah. seen the stories. You, you've seen the Friday Night <laughs> big Lights. Big stadiums Big stadiums. I mean, it, it, they're all, those stadiums and, are like yeah. cathedrals, and the That's players right. are like yeah. gods. And so, and I could throw a football really well. Mm -hmm. And so I got a lot of breaks cut to me in life because of that. I was a three-year mm -hmm. starter on my high school team. Right. And uh, a lot of my behavior, a lot of my character issues mm -hmm got pushed to the side because, hey, Damon's a really mm -hmm. good athlete. And I went off to college. I got a scholarship to play football at the University of North Texas. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, the wheels kind of came off the wagon. I was an altar boy growing up. I was in mm -hmm. church every Sunday. My mom made sure we were in church every Sunday. So from 7 to 18, I never missed a mass. When I got to college, I went to church five times. Those are holidays. I don't, that yeah. doesn't really even count, do they? I don't, I don't <laughs> Christmas, think, Easter, and all yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, yeah. but that was my life. I, mm -hmm. I, I quit focusing on the, on the things that were important mm -hmm. because that safety net wasn't around me anymore to help push me there. And I went after the things that, that I wanted to party all the time. I was very serious about football, too. All mm -hmm. I wanted to be was a starting quarterback, and I got to be that. Mm -hmm. And eventually I got hurt. I got hurt against Texas A&M in 96, mm -hmm. and I didn't, have, I didn't have a plan B or a plan C. Mm -hmm. I got to a fork in the road, and I made all the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. I started putting in hardcore drugs to change the way I felt, cocaine, ecstasy, mm -hmm. pills, you name it, right. doing it on a party all the time. Somehow, by the grace of God, I graduate from college, go off to Washington, work in Congress, I work for a guy running for president. Mm -hmm. Then I get a job working on Wall Street for one of the biggest Wall Street banks in the world, mm -hmm. UBS. And I'm trained to be a stockbroker. And one day at work, this guy introduces me to methamphetamine. I'm dragging around at work. Mm -hmm. He says, come on down to the parking garage and try this. Father, I took one hit of that, that drug, and I was up mm -hmm. for four days. And I was instantly mm -hmm. hooked. And I gave away everything. And I couldn't give it away fast enough. My mm -hmm. job, my home, my savings, mm -hmm. my car, my family, my tethering to God, my sanity, mm -hmm. the life of an addict. Right. Went from working on Wall Street to living on the streets of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so there I am. I fall in with a bunch of other meth heads. And mm -hmm. we start breaking into storage units, start breaking mm -hmm. into cars to feed our insatiable meth habits. Mm -hmm. And eventually we start breaking into homes. And, and uh, you know, we did a lot of burglars. Mm -hmm. I, um, I hurt a lot of people mm -hmm. by doing the burglars. I have a lot of victims out there. And, and there's no way to, to minimize the amount of pain and hurt and suffering and loss that I called these, mm -hmm. caused these people. Because I didn't just take these people's property. Man, I took their sense of security. Mm -hmm. I took their memories. I mm -hmm. mean, there's things that they'll never get back. But their sense right. of security, I don't know if they ever get that back. You know, there's people going home in Dallas right now, mm -hmm. putting their key in the door, thinking, man, Damon West, that, that, mm -hmm. the reason why I locked my door, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but after about three years of this, on July 30th, 2008, a Dallas SWAT team came in and, and scooped mm -hmm. me up. And I always tell people, that wasn't just the day I was arrested. That was the day I was rescued. Oh, God got me yeah. out of a situation yeah. I couldn't get myself out of. There was no way I was leaving that thing alive. And so um, I'm in county jail. And, you know, for the first time in years, I'm going to be sober. And the only mm -hmm. thought I have going through my head is how am I going to get my dope while I'm in here? And mm -hmm. eventually I call home. And my mom tells me on the phone call, she's like, baby, you know, you're now a captive audience to God mm -hmm. and you better start listening. There's nothing we can do for you anymore. Right. She said, do you remember that prayer plaque that I had on your wall as a mm -hmm. kid growing up? And I'm, Father, I'm coming off this meth. Mm -hmm. I've been on meth for years and I, I can't think mm -hmm. straight. Right. I was like, no, Mama, don't. She said, baby, it was footprints in the sand. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the story of footprints in the sand? Oh, yeah. And, you know, through the tears, I told my mom, no, I don't. And so she patiently and lovingly, like a mother, retold me the story of footprints in the sand mm -hmm. about a guy walking on the beach with Jesus. And you know, every time something good happens in this guy's life, they're watching a video in the sky. And every time something good happens, there's two sets of footprints mm -hmm. walking side by side. But right. when there's something bad, when there's pain, hurt, suffering, loss, when he loses his football mm -hmm. career, it's one set of footprints. And she said, the guy got so upset with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, you know, God, what's up, man? Every time something good happens to me, you're there with me. But when something bad happens, you abandon mm -hmm. me. And she said, that's when God said, Damon, you fool. Every time you saw one set of footprints, I didn't abandon you. I carried yeah. you. And so my mom kept drilling that into me, you know. 
in county jail, I was there for 10 months, and, and all I could think about in that 10 months is I can't wait to get probation and get out of here and get high mm -hmm. again. But at the end of 10 months, a jury of my peers sat there after six days of trial mm -hmm. and sentenced me to 65 years in prison. Oh, wow. 65 years, Father. That's a life mm -hmm. sentence in Texas. Right. And uh, that was rock bottom. You know, uh, and rock bottom can be a good foundation to build a life on if mm -hmm. you're receptive to it. Mm -hmm. But that's really where I was stripped of everything. And I, I'm getting wow. ready to go in the Texas prison system and this, this inmate in there mm -hmm. named Mr. Jackson gave me the coffee bean analogy, which I right. think y'all played earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and that coffee bean analogy really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the tools I took with me into that prison environment. Wow. And prison is where I changed. Yeah. Well, this is, this is amazing, and we're going to take a break right now, but after the break, we're going to speak about how you had this experience and encounter with Jesus Christ in prison, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what you're doing now. Absolutely. So, yeah. More with Damon West after the break. Now back to our interview with Damon West. Okay, so... Yeah, here you are now on your way to prison. Tell us, tell us what happened, what, what's going on here and, and, and how you uh, managed to find Christ there. Oh man, so, so I know from talking to Mr. Jackson what to expect from prison that, hey, he's like, man, you're gonna get to a lot of fights in here. You're mm -hmm. not gonna get to a I made my parents promise. Mm -hmm. My parents promised me, Damon, come back as the man we mm -hmm. raised. You know, no tattoos and, and don't get into one of these white mm -hmm. hate groups because you're scared because you're a minority mm -hmm. in there. And so I, I tell Mr. Jackson, I tell everybody on my pod in county mm -hmm. jail, I've made this promise and everybody laughs at me. But Mr. Jackson takes me serious and he says, listen, mm -hmm. if you're going to do that, you need to understand that you're going to get in a lot of fights. But, and you're not going to win all your fights. Mm -hmm. He said, he gave me this, this point. He said, you don't have to win all your fights in life, but you do have to fight all your mm -hmm. fights. He said, don't ever turn out a fight. And that's mm -hmm. a lesson in life, Father. Yeah, that's Be what you've taken even and you're using now. You right, know? because, I mean, <laughs> I learned more about myself from my mm -hmm. losses than I ever did from my wins. When was the last time you really inspected a win? That's but right. when you get your, your butt handed to mm. you, you really You're inspect humbled. that. You're That's humbled. Right. That's right. You're broken out. Like I said, rock bottom is a good foundation to grow mm. on. So here I am going into prison with this understanding there's going to be a lot of violence. Mm. But, man, I had no clue, even with what he mm. told me. It was extremely violent when I got there. And first, all the because prison's all about race. Yeah. So first, all the white gangs want to get a crack mm. at you. So the Aryan yeah. Brotherhood, the Aryan Circle, the White Knights, mm. the Woods. I'm fighting all these guys off. It takes a couple of weeks. And right. then after that, like Mr. Jackson told me, he <laughs> said, after you get done with the white gangs, the black gangs are going to come <laughs> after you because the white right. gangs going to send them. Crips, the Bloods, Gangster yeah. Disciples, Mandingo Warriors. So I'm fighting all these guys. And, and Father, I'm so terrified. Every time I leave that cell, someone yells out, West, I want to look at you in the shower. And there's nothing crazy about yeah. what they're saying. I want to look at you in the shower. It means we're going to box in that shower right yeah. now because people fight in the shower mm -hmm. in prison. There's no guards back mm -hmm. there. There's no cameras. And right. blood cleans up really easily mm -hmm. out of there. And uh, so I'm doing that. I'm about six weeks into prison, man. And I go down to the prison chapel mm -hmm. and this is one place that, that I've tried to get to as much mm -hmm. as I can, but I'm so terrified to leave my cell, yeah. I just don't go that much. And I go there and I find this lady named Miss D, Miss D mm -hmm. Doucette, this little yeah. old Catholic lady down there. And there's a big Catholic community at this prison. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest in Texas. Mm -hmm. I just blessed to end up at that prison. Mm -hmm. And I go in there and I, and I ask Miss D if we can talk and close the door and I tell her, Miss D, I'm, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this 65 years. I'm mm -hmm. really thinking about killing myself. Mm -hmm. And um, she talks to me about my Catholic faith. She's Catholic too. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she says, look, you've got to do like your mom said, get on God's back. And she said, baby, do you have a rosary? And I said, no, Miss D, I don't. They took it from me when I came from county jail because mm -hmm. you can't bring anything to the prison mm -hmm. with you. And so she gave me this prison rosary. This is my rosary from prison still, Father. Okay. I, I carry this thing with me everywhere cool. I go. And, and yeah. like uh, people, uh, since I've been out, have given me all these mm -hmm. ornamental and nice rosaries. But mm -hmm. I dance with who brought me, man. This is the yeah. one that Miss D gave me. And she prayed a rosary with him right there on the spot and she said pray one of these every day for me and promise mm -hmm. that you'll pray it and you'll you'll talk yeah. to the blessed mother and ask the blessed mm -hmm. mother to intercede for you mm -hmm. and I did and she put me in all the Catholic mm -hmm. classes I could mm -hmm. get into at that chapel they have mm -hmm. a lot of Catholic groups to get into the Brotherhood of St. Dismas was one mm -hmm. of the ones I really do you know yeah, St. Dismas is yeah. the good thief <laughs> but I immediately identified with yeah, this because here right. I am I'm a thief right. and I'm a convicted thief mm -hmm. but I'm not a bad guy. I made a lot of mistakes and I was on drugs, but I'm not a bad guy and I just want to be loved again. I want to be like that prodigal son and come home to something. So I start getting down in that chapel as much as I can. And then eventually one of the chaplains in there gets me into what's called the Acts Retreat. They called them mm -hmm. Acts at the time. Now they're called mm -hmm. the St. Colby Ministry because mm -hmm. St. Colby is the patron mm -hmm. saint of prisoners. And I go in there and it's a four day retreat. And mm -hmm. these men from the outside, Father, that came in, men like Joe Tatoris, the mm -hmm. guy that's it's a buddy of mine now that goes in the retreats with me. But 
Joe and these guys come in and, and they're, they leave their homes, their mm -hmm. families, their jobs, their lives mm -hmm. for four days mm -hmm. to come spend time with the incarcerated, mm -hmm. the, the, the sinners, the, the menace. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be around us prisoners, mm -hmm. you know, and they loved on us. Mm -hmm. They hugged us, and, it, and I saw every man in there, the biggest, baddest, baddest guys in the joint, after four days in that retreat, mm -hmm. were crying like babies, man. You saw the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit work that room, mm -hmm. and there was something in there. And that's when I learned about servant leadership. Mm -hmm. The secret to life, Father, is serving others mm -hmm. and being humble. That's right. And that's what I learned about that from those men. Mm -hmm. And that servant leadership was something yeah. I could take and grow on. And, right. and I got into recovery in prison. Recovery. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm an addict. Right. I don't have, if I don't have a program recovery, uh -huh. I don't have anything. And so God does this powerful work in your life in the prison. You've, you, you're converting, you're transforming in there. How, how much, how long were you there actually? Okay, I was in prison for mm -hmm. seven years and yeah. three months. And then came the uh, time where you could be released and the probation? Yeah, so they, they came uh, November 16th, yeah. 2015. Yeah. Two years ago <laughs> today. So. Yeah, it was being pre-recorded today. Yeah, so. Hey, but praise the Lord. Two years ago, uh, they came by uh -huh. and said, hey, look, we're going to uh -huh. give you one shot. We're going to yeah. let you go. But if you come back, we're, you know, we're going to mm -hmm. have you finish off this sentence for us. So right. they came back and told me you're on parole until 2073. Mm -hmm. Go out there and don't mm -hmm. make any more mistakes and mm -hmm. be the best person you can be. And mm -hmm. so now I've got this opportunity in front of me. And, and you've but, become a servant leader. And oh, tell us about absolutely. your servanthood right now and how you're showing leadership out, ministering uh, to uh, college students and college athletes. And oh, man, well, the first thing was, was getting this job at Provo Sumpter yeah. Law Firm. They, I had to have a foundation mm -hmm. to build on, and, mm -hmm. and they opened the door. They gave me a shot. Never, I never hired a felon. Mm -hmm. And from that, this firm has allowed me to go all over the country to all these speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. I go to high schools, churches, youth groups. Mm -hmm. Back at home in the diocese in Beaumont where I am, mm -hmm. they, they let me go to talk to all the youth groups. I spent most of my mm -hmm. Wednesdays doing it last year. Mm -hmm. I go to the church conventions and talk to them. Mm -hmm. College football teams all over the country. I was just at University of Alabama in mm -hmm. August talking to their football team oh, yeah. because I was a college football player too and I have this unique currency to spend with everybody. But it's not just so much the warning about the mm -hmm. dangers of drugs and addiction and the consequences mm -hmm. of bad decisions. It's the message of hope, Father. Mm -hmm. It's the message of hope that if I can build a life inside of that environment. Or as Coach Davos Winnie said, if you can bloom where you're planted. Mm -hmm. You know, if I could bloom where I was planted mm -hmm. in there, then that's got to give people hope, you know, mm -hmm. hope that whatever problem you're facing, whatever you're going through, hey, if God could work that in Damon West's life, God can work it in your life too. Amen. And that's Amen. the message yeah. I try to bring to people. And I'm always trying to find that one kid yeah. in the crowd, that one kid that you, you stop something in its tracks from ever mm -hmm. happening. So, you know, the retreat you had in the prison changed your life forever. And now you're giving back. You're doing the same thing. Tell us about what, what you're doing in the prisons now. All the things I do yeah. in my father, the colleges, the mm -hmm. high schools, the churches, the youth groups, they're great. I yeah. love doing it. I love being able to give back and doing God's mm -hmm. work. But the prison, man, that's the best thing I have going. I get to go into prisons now. Mm -hmm. I get to go into my old prison with the same St. Colby group and bring those retreats to inmates. Like they used to, like men used to bring mm -hmm. it to me. Servant leadership. Mm -hmm. I mean, here it is. God, we've come full circle now. Mm -hmm. The guy that was going through the retreat is now the guy bringing the retreat to other people. And in, in, in a prison environment, man, I've got a currency to spend with these guys. I've got street cred when I go into a prison, any prison in America, because those guys can't look at me and say, well, that guy's never done hard time. I have a life sentence. Or he never did time in a hard unit. One of the hardest units in mm -hmm. Texas, you know? But I get to go back in these prisons now and bring a message of hope. And every one of these guys, I mean, I get 100% participation mm -hmm. on this deal. These guys will all come up and say, Damon, you mm -hmm. bring us hope. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, that's great. But if you want what I've got, you've got to start today. You've got to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. You've got to change what you're doing in here. You've got to start those habits today. You've got to become a servant leader inside this place. And because mm -hmm. that's, that's what I had to do. But the great thing about it is, especially in the prison, I was last weekend, I was inside mm -hmm. my old prison where mm -hmm. I did my time with the Colby retreat. Mm -hmm. And those guys all know that I'm not just talking something. I walk the walk because they remember, man, Damon went out and helped other people. Because the secret to life is serving others and being humble. You help other people yeah. reach their goals in life. And when you're really helping other mm -hmm. people and you're doing it for, for nothing but the good of God, mm -hmm. then you're really living, you know, mm -hmm. because you've got to work. I tell these guys, you've got to work out three areas every day in this prison. It's going to be the hardest thing in the world, mm -hmm. spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, you are what you eat. That's not just with food, but what are you feeding yourself spiritually? Mm -hmm. Do you tap into God? Do you feed yourself spiritually at all? What kind of books are you reading? What kind of videos are you watch? What kind of TV do you watch mm -hmm. in the day room? What kind you know? of friends? What yeah. kind of friends do you hang around? Yeah. You show me who you hang out with, I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> Everybody, most people in yeah. life want to be led, Father. That's right. a fact. And in the absence of good leadership, they'll take bad leadership. Mm -hmm. a, a thirsty man in the, in the desert will drink the sand when he sees a mirage, yeah. and he'll kill him. 
Well, hey, this, this is a powerful, wonderful story, Damon. Thank you for coming here and sharing it with us. You know, that's exactly what you did. I know that this is going to be powerful and effective to all our viewers, all our watchers. You know, they, they, they know for certain now that all things are possible with God, and you're a living proof of it. You, you're a walking miracle. Thanks be to Thank God, and thanks much, for man. what you're thanks doing for having me. I'm in the church. I'm to be here. Thank you very God much. God bless you, Thank man. Thank you very yeah. much. So now uh, here's Father Joseph with Fruit of the Earth. to you, O God, through the earth, our mother, who produces wonderful fruits. Welcome to Plant Gardens and Eat Their Fruits, a series dedicated to enjoying the goodness of God's creation and your healthy body and soul. You know, in Isaiah, he speaks of those who are doing works of charity, who are clothing the naked, who are giving bread to the hungry, who are discontinuing malicious speech, who are doing what is just. He said they're going to be like a watered garden. This is Isaiah 58, verse 11. Conversely, he says in uh, the first chapter that sinners and rebels, they're like a garden without water. You know, growing up on a farm in Iowa, we prayed for rain sometimes, especially in the summer when it would be very dry and your crops depended on that rain, and if they didn't get it, your uh, production would not be very high. But if you got, got that bountiful rain, it kept things growing and flourishing. And so we see last night we had a beautiful rain here, and I actually prayed for it. I asked God to bless it, because we needed uh, some water on our plants here. And I know how much more beneficial rainwater is than just tap water is. And it is because Rainwater brings that new nitrogen from the air down to the earth. And the plants love that nitrogen. It helps them to absorb all of the nutrients and things that they need to flourish. And so you see how everything is flourishing this morning. You had this wonderful rain last night. And really, we need to keep our bodies well hydrated too, drinking enough good water, not just those sodas and caffeine and all of those things, but good, healthy water keeps our bodies flourishing as well. I've learned a lot just about maintaining my own physical health by how do I maintain the plant's health. So that collected rainwater, uh, giving it the right soil and nutrition that it needs, plenty of sunshine, those are things that help us physically flourish in our bodies as well. Now behind me you can see something that our Father Pascal made for us, this shed to keep all of our garden tools, but he's also uh, has this ingenious method of collecting rainwater. You'll see that the roof slopes down there and it goes into this container and then there's another container below that too so that we can keep rainwater, which is really important, especially in the early uh, stage of a plant's life. So I like to use that rainwater in order to rain this, uh, to use on the early plants if we haven't had a good rain. Now Jesus, too, spoke about a living water that he wanted to give. So on a natural level, we need that water to thrive. But on the supernatural level, we need that living water. And St. John tells us that he was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And so this living water of the Holy Spirit is what it springs up to eternal life, Jesus said. So it's raising us higher than just on a natural level. So we want to invoke the Holy Spirit to come come and renew the face of the earth. And then we could think of another passage from John chapter 6, where Jesus says, whoever comes to me will not thirst. And so Jesus is that one that satisfies the deepest thirst that we have, that thirst for God's love. So I conclude as always with a passage from St. Francis's Canticle of Brother's Son. Praise to you, O God, through the earth, our mother, who produces wonderful fruits. Father Joseph made a great point tonight about the water in the garden and how we receive the Holy Spirit from Christ. The water that he gives, as he tells the Samaritan woman at the well, becomes a spring in us, overflowing to eternal life, meaning that 
We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we receive grace, we're transformed, and we can be a source of grace in a sense to others, in the sense that we can work and help serve people and lead mm. others to faith. Amen, Father. And you know, all of this begins at our baptism. You know, when we go through those sacred waters and right there immediately, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. We are immediately transformed. God puts his indelible mark on us and we now receive the inheritance of living the mysteries of Jesus Christ so that we can go out and be like him and be rivers of living water. Right. And that's the painting we have behind us of Pentecost, mm -hmm. of Holy Spirit coming upon Our Lady and the Apostles and the whole church mm -hmm. gathered there. And they go out and bust out of the doors on mission. Mm -hmm. So receiving the Holy Spirit means being caught up in the mission of Christ. The church lives to be dispossessed of mm -hmm. herself, lives to give herself away. You know, and our guest tonight, Damon West, he had a great analogy yes. of the coffee bean. You know, yeah. he talked about putting the carrot in the water, the egg in the water, they cook. Yeah. You put the coffee bean in the water and it gives itself away completely. Mm -hmm. It makes coffee, yeah. it turns the water into coffee. He says mm -hmm. we need to be like that. Yeah, we do. We need to uh, be these uh, servant leaders, as he was saying. You know, we, we become like, uh, like coffee. We change the atmosphere. We bring in holiness. We bring in God's love. And, and even through the simplest things by being courteous, by, by showing love for people, understanding, be patient. You know, this is, these are all many ways we can uh, change uh, the world around us, in other words. Right, so that yeah. is our Into the Vineyard challenge this week, is to be a servant leader. And we can look at Damon West's life, that whole transformation that happened beginning in prison, mm. you know, formed him to give to others. Now he's out and he's totally, you know, giving away what he's received. He's being a servant leader. He's leading others to Christ. He's serving them, helping them mm -hmm. to find Christ. <clears throat> and we're all called to do that, whatever vocation we have in life, to witness to Christ, to bring mm -hmm. others to Jesus, and to serve others. So this week, we ask you to look at ways to be a servant, to be a humble servant, to see how can you improve the situation around you? How mm -hmm. can you help others, mm -hmm. especially help others to find Christ? but to help serve them in charity. That's right, and I think St. Paul says it correctly in Philippians chapter two, when he says, do not be so concerned with your own needs, but be more concerned with the needs of others, not just your own self-interest, but also look to the interests of others people, because this is the example of Jesus Christ. And we'll send you out into that vineyard with a blessing. May our heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace, and may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Anywhere I go, you're always in my heart. Anywhere I travel, I never far apart. I can get lost, lose my direction, still have our connection.